lost, found and rejoice, unleashing the Father's love. While we were living in Dayton, Ohio, Karen, my daughter, had a beautiful bicycle. While living in an apartment, it was hard to keep the bicycle inside the house for so many nights. We used to leave them outside, especially when the tires get muddy. One day we came to know that her bicycle was missing. Someone has stolen her bicycle. We initially thought this may be, you know, someone took a ride or some of her friends might have taken for a ride. We looked everywhere in the old apartment complex. We searched everywhere but found that bicycle is lost. Do you remember anything that you lost that was precious to you? That was precious in your life? In today, what I'm going to read to you is Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. It talks about the parable of the lost sheep and uh, the parable of the lost coin. Chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. Now the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muted. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully put it, puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one, does she light a lamp? Doesn't she light a lamp? Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Jesus talks about the lost. One of them was about the lost sheep. Another one was about the lost coin. The final part of chapter 15, we have another story told by Jesus about a son. We call it a prodigal son. We all know about this arrogant son who demanded his inheritance from his father, before father was even dead. Which is not the cultural norms in the ancient uh, Jewish-Palestinian context. This is the story of a lost son. Story of a lost sheep. Story of a lost coin. And finally in this chapter what we find is the story of a lost son. The story we all know, but many times we forget the truth associated with it. This man receives sinners and eats with them is the accusation or complaints made against Jesus by the Pharisees and the scribes. The common words found on Luke chapter 15 or the scripture I just read, read is lost, found, Repentance and rejoice. Since lost is a verb, we should expect 
we should expect to see it following a subject of some kind. And in today's reading, it is about a lost ship and a lost coin. Sometimes associated with loss, we say, I lost an opportunity. I lost my basketball or I lost my bicycle. I lost my money. I lost someone so dear to me. Following Jesus sometimes means following the red letters. We are the people of the red letters. We all wish to come home or be home with God. The gospel message is a message of a journey, a journey to reach home. Jesus is so attracted to people who are nothing like him. God places infinite value on us. He shows us extraordinary respect. God gives us unconditional love and unconditional acceptance. Luke chapter 19 verse 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. It is not about how much we have done for God. It is about how much we, He has done for us. How much God has done for us. God's generosity is indeed reaching out to people they don't expect. That we probably wouldn't expect either. And when someone responds to his generosity, his calling, his welcome home, and turn to him, we all should join heaven and throw a party. On the other side, the sin will take you and me further than you and I want to go. Keep you and me longer than you and I want to stay. Cost you and me more than you and I want to pay. We are, in one way or another, a lost generation. We very often feel like a lost sheep, a paradigm for our culture. Every institution, every corporation, every political parties, ethnic groups, governments experience a sense of displacement and loss. They all experience potential threat in this postmodern era to their own very existence in some cases. Even in the parable of Jesus finding the lost, remember the other 99 sheep were not in safety. They still in the wilderness, in an open ground. What is the way to survive in the wilderness? How do we deal with our sense of lostness? It's not only possible by sticking together. No one makes it alone. We need this group in our wilderness journey. We need a crew. We need a tribe. And in the generational, multicultural, diverse, welcoming, spirit-filled justice-seeking, socially and morally committed, and praying generation to keep it moving. This makes sense in the context of a sticky church. I talked to you last week about a sticky church. In our wilderness journey, we need to be a sticky church, a sticky congregation. The image of a sticky church come to us from a honeycomb or honey is nest, honeycomb and honey, just they are on top of each other. They just hang around together most of the night, most of the times. Of course, the whole world is there. There is beautiful flowers out there. There are beautiful roads and fields, everything else that you can imagine. But a bee will say that they are safe in the bee's nest. They are back home. It is like the image of a sticky church. God is waiting with open arms for our return. And not only that, he is coming to us in order to find us in the place where we are. A GPS that is broken is far better than a faulty GPS. Because a broken GPS, you and I will be inclined to replace it. Whereas a faulty one 
will lead you and I totally astray in a wrong path. Please check your GPS status. Is it a faulty one or a broken one? If it is broken one, please replace it. If it is a faulty one, please repair it. From the viewpoint of Father's love, the more he loves you, the more he can get hurt. The deeper he loves you, the deeper he can get hurt. The greater he loves you, the greater he can forgive. The world gives an illusion of happiness. Our Father in heaven gives you and me the reality of happiness. The true happiness is found in the Lord. If you believe your good works, the moral character, the financial stability, your uh, karma will take you to a place where God wants you to. Friends, I tell you, God's favor will not reach to the place of your pride. It will keep you outside of God's feast and forgiveness. Remember, the gospel is like a caged lion. It doesn't need to defend for itself. The world can be simply categorized into two different kinds of people. They are either lost or found, or lost or saved, regardless of your color, shape, size, nationality, place of work, family of origin. In God's own eyes, you are either lost or you are in the category of the saved. There are churches that teach us that you are either almost lost or almost found or completely lost or completely found. I'm not watering down the gospel message from this, through this platform. Sure, you and I know when we are in a lost state or when we are saved or in a safe state. There is great joy both in heaven and on earth when someone makes the decision to repent and follow Jesus Christ. Through this parable, we can understand the multi-dimension of the gospel message. We see a father who seeks the lost. I'm sure there is a response needed from our end. This is a story of a son or a daughter willing to come home. Repent and return home to the father. If I only preach about a loving father who seeks after the lost, and I'm sure the message of gospel is not complete. We have to see the heart of a prodigal son, a desire to return home and come to the father's love. Of course, we have a father who loves you so dearly, but it is our response, it is our, 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 our response to father's love is to have a willing heart to return just like that prodigal son. Of course, we are lost. A father is searching for us. When I was doing or preparing this message, I come across a story on the internet, online, by Father Bill Shepherd. Once he told a story online over the internet about a stolen car in California. This actually happened in way back in 1981. Cars are stolen every day in our country, in the nation, but what is unique about this story? This case was even reported through a radio station. An alert was given by the police even. The reason was on the front seat of a stolen car seat, a box of crackers that are laced with uh, cyanide. This is unknown to the thief, and it was a rat bait. The owner of the car had some issues with the rat, and he wants to take care of the rat or kill the rat. So he just brought or he just made some laced crackers with a cyanide in it. Now the police and the owner of the stolen car were more interested in apprehending the thief to save his life rather than to recover the stolen car. Of course, the stolen car is important. But his love was going beyond that, beyond to the extent of letting him know, even if he wants to keep the car, 
don't die by eating those crackers so often when we run away from god we feel it it is uh, to escape his punishment we think of a god many times a god who is angry at us who is not who is standing with a stick to punish us but our god is not what i see in this chapter he's a loving father who go after the lost sheep but what we actually doing in this escape is that we are escaping god's designed rescue my friends sometime with a stolen car you and i may be running away running away to we think that we are running away to safety but remember a father who come after you has a message of rescue don't ignore this message of rescue in your life the kingdom of jesus represented by the poor blind crippled lame sinners and tax collectors it is a party time rejoice and found it because i have found what i have st- what i have been lost my father in heaven found me when i was in a lost situation you know there is happiness when we come together in the presence of god i remember an old little children song if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're happy and you know it then your face will surely show it if you're happy and you know it clap your hands if you're happy and you know it stamp your feet if you're happy and you know it clap stamp your feet if you're happy and you know it then your face will surely show it if you're happy and you know it stamp your feet dear friends once we were all in a state of lost in a state where we are not being able to found friends we are more precious than a sheep we are more precious than a coin we are more precious than anything else that you can find in this world dear friends come home let us be a sticky community let us be a sticky church let us celebrate god's presence let us be happy let's put a smiling face let's be happy because god is great he is awesome he is chasing you i don't know in what category that you are listening to me at this time you know it in your heart you know it you know it deep in your heart are you in a stolen lost state or are you in a state where you are being found by the lord you're being in a state where you have been saved my friends come home come home the presence of the lord there is joy there is happiness there is prosperity not only in this world but the world yet to come we are all preparing ourselves for a great feast a day of celebration where all the found one from ancients of days from generation to generations at the resurrection of christ return at the time of christ return we all will be resurrected and be found on this day of god's joy and god's presence may god bless you and pray with me dear lord i pray for my friends who are listening to listening to this uh, conversation i pray oh god that you may find them in the place where they are they may be found they may be people who return home and rejoice in the presence of god lord jesus i pray and allow them to this prayer by deep in their heart lord i come back to you thank you because i am being found by you forgive my sins forgive my shortcomings i have a repentant heart forgive me oh god come as a lord and savior in my life may god you be the lord and king and savior in my life i love you in jesus precious name i pray may god bless you with this words this is dr binu peniel this is kevnomic